So the coronavirus has made it to New York. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. Everyone stay safe. Wash your hands for 20 seconds. And remember, if the crown hits you, at least you don't have to watch Liverpool win the league. Hello and welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. It's your number one Yeezy Buster coming at you. Uh, back from England, and I thought, inspired by my trip over to Jolly Old Lickland, I thought, why not? Let's go ahead. Let's do all-time American leagues versus all-time English leagues. Which, on the surface, you might be like, oh, this is gonna be a slaughter. Of course, England's gonna have the way better players, especially the icons. That's why I framed it as American Leagues and not the MLS. Because here's the thing, there have been a lot of attempts to make soccer a thing over here in the States. And while MLS is the current iteration that you guys are probably the most familiar with, uh, it's not the only one. And it's gonna shock you how many great, historic, iconic players have actually ended their career or spent some of their time playing in America. People that I never expected, like Pele, George Best. So that is what we're going to do today. We are going to create a team of the best players to ever play in America and put them up against some of the best players who have played in the English leagues. And if you are excited to see this age-old rivalry between the UK and America, you go ahead, smush your hard rack nipple in that like button right now. Subscribe if you are new. Without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let me introduce you to the greatest all-time team of players to ever play in America. Before we get into that, I'm, I don't think I properly dressed. Let's... All right, better. USA, baby! So while I've been doing all these all-time experiments, I've painstakingly gone through the entire history of pretty much every icon that appeared in FIFA 20, looking over the various teams that they played for, and I noticed that a stinky amount of them have actually played in America. A lot of them played in the MLS, but there were now defunct leagues uh, back in like the 60s and the 70s and the 80s that a lot of historic greats actually played here But here's the thing and this is gonna piss a lot of people off So go ahead get your finger over that dislike button right now So big elephant in the room there are a lot of players who have played in both England as well as as America. And I think it's very fair to say that the majority of these players are probably going to be more renowned for their time in the Premier League than they are over in the MLS. If I gave the English League first priority on all the icons that they're more renowned for, it would be a complete slaughter. It wouldn't even be close. But for the sake of making it competitive and to trigger all of my British fans, yep, this is what I'm going to do. If they played in both, as long as they played in America, I'm gonna put them on the American team. <laughs> I know, it's not fair. But for the sake of this experiment, for it to be anywhere close to even, then this is, this is how I had to go about it. And trust me, the forfeit, if I lose, is going to be worthy of it. I will pay a price. And more, I think, honestly, it was really interesting for me to find out how many historically great players have actually played in America at some point in their career. Like, for example, the highest rated player in the game, some might argue the GOAT, the Brazilian Pele, finished off his career playing in America, specifically on the New York Cosmos. If you've never heard of him, probably weren't born. Basically, he played in the MLS of the 1970s and 80s. The league was called the North American Soccer League. You know, a league isn't gonna do well when its acronym is nasal. I mean, come on guys. <laughs> yeah. But Pele here only played for two club teams the entirety of his career. And that of course is Santos. And then he played for the New York Cosmos in the twilight of his career. And this next one totally shocked me. Johan Cruyff didn't play not for one, but two American teams. The Washington Diplomats, which is like the lamest name for a team ever. Yeah, we're totally going to debate them into submission, guys. We're gonna filibuster their brains out. As well as also playing for the Los Angeles Aztecs which, fun fact, was at one time partially owned by Sir Elton John. Look it up. So how did he end up in the United States? Well, the story goes was he ended his career and he actually retired at Barcelona, but he lost millions of dollars in a series of poor investments. So he had to come out of retirement and who was offering the big bucks to play? He started Unidos. And he almost actually ended up playing for the New York Cosmos. So we could have had a team that had both Pele and Johan Cruyff on it. That would have been pretty weird. I mean, both were past the prime, but I mean, still pretty cool. Then the next one up, this is gonna trigger a lot of people that George Best is gonna be in the English team. But he's actually played three times in the United States. He first came to the Los Angeles Aztecs, then he went back to Fulham, then he came back to the Los Angeles Aztecs, then he went to a number of teams and then returned to the San Jose Earthquakes, which as some of you guys might have known is actually in the MLS to this day. It's actually my hometown MLS team, but back then it was part of Nasal. Also fun fact, back in Nasal, there wasn't any draws. If it was a tie at the end of regulation, you would just have a penalty shootout, but not a traditional penalty shootout. No, this is what they would do. The attacker would get the ball like 30 yards out and the keeper could run off of his line. 
So it was just a ridiculous version of shootouts. It's kind of more like a, like a hockey shootout. Honestly, England, bring this over. Come on, it'll be more fun. But anyway, continuing on, of course, we all know Zlatan Ibrahimovic. He just came back from the MLS, and he also played for two seasons over at Manchester United. Debatable, actually, where he made the bigger impact. I don't know, vote up in the eye things right now. Where did Zlatan make a bigger impact? In the Prem or in MLS? And then, of course, we have Perlo, who ended his career over in the MLS. He played at NYC. And they're playing the Prem, so clear-cut one for America. This one, not so much. This one's gonna, <laughs> this one's gonna get me a lot of dislikes. Stevie G. Obviously renowned for his time over at Liverpool, but ended his career over at LA Galaxy. Then to the back line, a couple of interesting names, but we're gonna first start out with Ashley Cole, of course, renowned for his time over at Chelsea as well as Arsenal, and then uh, played a lengthy career over at LA Galaxy. And then our first center back here is Bobby Moore. Obviously, way more renowned for his time over at West Ham and Fulham, but spent a lone spell at the San Antonio Thunder, then played for the older version of the Seattle Sounders, and then ended his career with the Carolina Lightning. Lightning. Now that last team, the Carolina Lightning, wasn't even in nasal. It was in a different league called the American Soccer League, whose initial champion was just known as the Irish Americans. That was... That was, that was the, that was the winner. And in 1942, the champion of the ASL was a team known as the Brooklyn Hispanos. Muy bien. So long story short, Bobby Moore, American as apple pie. Next to him, you have Alessandro Nesta, who's more renowned for his time at Lazio and Milan, but actually spent a season over with the Montreal Impact, which technically is a Canadian team, but still is, you know, an American league. And then this one super surprised me too, maybe inspired by the likes of Pele, but the Brazilian right back great, Carlos Alberto, played three times in America. He played for the New York Cosmos, then got transferred to the California Surf, not making up these names, and then he went back to the New York Cosmos to end his career. And then for keepers, so no icons, but I mean, come on guys, Europeans, you gotta give Americans credit. If there's one thing that we have been able to produce, historically, it's been pretty good keepers. So Big Tim Howard got a retro card, which put him out to an 89, and he's one of the few Americans on here, so I made him the captain. And here's one that I had no clue about, Eusebio has not played just in the American League. He's played for not one, not two, he's played for five different teams in America. The Portuguese legend after his long stored career over at Benfica then went on to play for the Boston Minutemen, the Toronto Metros, the Las Vegas Quicksilvers, the New Jersey Americans, and <laughs> they're just New Jersey Americans, and the Buffalo Stallions, which wasn't in nasal, it was actually an indoor football league. So Eusebio seemed to really like it over here in America. Real Madrid legend Raul ended his career with the New York Cosmos. Kaká played for Orlando City. Frankie Lamps played for NYC. Obviously more renowned for his time over at Chelsea. The Mexican legend Hugo Sanchez before moving over to Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid actually was on loan to an American team. The San Diego, and I'm not I'm I'm not making this up. The San Diego Soccers. It's not even spelled like soccer like regular sock. It's spelled like like a sock on your foot and then ERS. Sockers. And like their logo wasn't like a sock. I'm guessing like the implication is that they're they they like hit someone? Like I'm gonna sock her in the face. <laughs> Barcelona legend Stoikov actually ended up playing the MLS for both the Chicago Fire as well as DC United in the early 2000s. And alright, okay. I yes, Henri definitely belongs in the English side. Obviously, he's most renowned for his time over at Arsenal. And of course he had a couple seasons over at Barcelona as well, but he played for the New York Red Bulls, and he was like pretty good at MLS. Didier Drogba, obviously more renowned for his time over at Chelsea, but also played for the Montreal Impact. Jean Luis Hernandez played for the LA Galaxy for a while. Wayne Rooney, obviously more renowned for his time over at Manchester United, but also had a nice little stint over at DC United. Bastian Schweinsteiger, another guy who's played for both, and I mean, I, I guess he hasn't really set MLS ablaze, but he wasn't all that great for Manchester United either, so I mean, it's kind of a coin flip. Also, as you can see, I put these older players at a, a normal age of 25, and then I gave them all their like flashback cards. So this is a flashback Rooney, this is like end of never Schweinsteiger, you got flashback Nani, you got flashback Bradley, who never was an 87. I do not know how they gave him a 87 card. <laughs> and then we have some throwbacks here. This is Alexi Laws's FIFA 17 Legends card coming in at a hefty 86. And we have Brad Friedel back in his like Tottenham days. And then to even it out, the people on the bench aren't great. The backup left back is 72 rated Jones. The fourth center back on the list is Ike O.P. Opara. 75 rated center back, but check it out, 88 sprint speed. He's really good cheap center back to buy in career mode. <laughs> and then the backup right back is actually this guy, Canoose, who's, who's really a CDM. So I mean, hey, look at this, right? Let's say I take out Gerard. I can still replace him with, let's say, Kaka. 
If I replace George Beth with like Stoikov and I put Eusebio up there and I put Schweinsteiger in at center back because that's actually where he plays in the MLS. And then I guess I'd have to take out Ashley Cole for oof. <laughs> that's a pretty hard dump right there. But even if I took out all the players who played for both and are more renowned for being in the English lead, it's a very, very strong starting 11. With the all-time American League team coming out to an attack of 93, a mid of 93, and a defense of 86. That 172 Jones is really bringing back that back line. But how does it compare to the all-time English side? Minus a, a lot of the top English players. <laughs> And I mean, it's it's still really good. You still got Cristiano Ronaldo, of course, renowned for his time over at Manchester United. Up top, you got Gary Lineker, who also played in La Liga. And then on the right side, since I stole Georgie Best from you, the next best option is modern day Mohamed Salah, coming in 90 overall. And the midfield is a no slouch. You got Ruud Hullet, who spent time over at Chelsea near the twilight of his career. You got Patrick Vieira, who was a defensive monolith for Arsenal back in the day. And then you have modern day Kevin De Bruyne, who's one of the best players in the world. And you have Emmanuel Petit over at left back, who played for both Arsenal and Chelsea. You have Desailly, who made over 150 appearances at Chelsea. And Laurent Blanc, who signed very briefly for Manchester United. And at the right back, I move Rio Ferdinand out there just because I think he has the athleticism to deal with it, and he's going to be the captain of the side. Obviously, well-renowned for his time over at Manchester United, alongside, of course, Peter Schmeichel. Then on the bench, you got a lot more Man United icons. You got Van der Sar, you got Paul Scholes, you got Ryan Giggs. Hierro, who's a Real Madrid legend, actually played over on the Prem. He finished up his career with a single season at Bolton Wanderers. You know, Michael Bollock, who's a Chelsea legend. You have Kenny Dengleish, who's a Liverpool legend. Uh, of course, Pires, who's an Arsenal legend. And then I go rapid fire in the reserves because there are a lot of great icons. <laughs> and modern day players that have played in the Prem or the Angel. You got Dennis Burkamp coming in 92. You got Eden Hazard, Michael Essien, Ruben Van Nistelrooy, current day Virgil van Dijk, Hans Lehmann, Mark Overmars, Alan Shearer, N'Golo Kante. Spilicueta is just here for depth. Same thing with Trent Alexander-Arnold as well as Robertson. You got Deco, you got Varane, you got Sol Campbell, you got Ian Rush, you got Shevchenko, Crespo, Lipmanin, Michael Owen, Roy Keane, Jay Kocha, Zola, as well as Makalele. So, all right, English people, you, you can't really complain. Your depth is out of this world. With the all English side minus a couple of your most famous icons coming out to an attack of 91, a mid of 91, and a defense of 88. So both of these teams, as you can see, going in very, very close to each other with maybe a slight advantage for the Americans. I am still single minus. All right, now what I've done is I've taken these two teams and I put them into career mode. As you can see, we sit on July 1st of 2019. We're gonna sim to the end of the season and see which league, all-time league, is gonna finish up higher on top. As to remain neutral, I shall be simming as Borussia Dortmund, as well as we place them both into the Bundesliga to have a neutral fighting ground. I mean, hey, we were both allies when we took on Germany back in the day. But as we get this simulation up and run, you guys go ahead and vote up in the eye thingies right now on which all-time league you think is going to come out on top. Is it going to be England or is it going to be America? And I mean, I think you guys know who I'm rooting for. Of course, I got to go for my boys, the Americans. If I get my prediction right, usually nothing bad happens to me. I'm all Gucci, baby. But if I get it wrong, I have to do a forfeit. And it's only apt. If the Americans lose in either the simulation or the live action portion, then I have to take a full spoonful of Marmite, Britain's greatest culinary invention. I'll be honest. During my week in England, I, I ate a lot of British food, and it's, um... It was very mediocre. <laughs> I don't want to be mean, but it's a little bit bland. But I did have beans on toast and it wasn't awful. But yeah, that be the forfeit, boys. A spoonful of Marmite. And if the Americans lose both, I have to do two spoonfuls. I'm gonna fucking get a double blow job. Two spoonfuls of Marmite just, just right down the hatch, guys. But I guess we'll find out who wins at the end of the season. Take it away, time wizard. Alright boys, we saw on June 1st of 2020. Let's see how the boys did at the end of the season. Player stats, and it is Zlatan! Zlatan Ibrahimovic for the Americans goes ahead and takes the 28 goals over Kenny Dang's leash of Liverpool. Robert Lewandowski showing well in third place, but we have Pele coming in in fourth. Cristiano Ronaldo popping up in ninth place for the English side, and then Johan Cruyff popping up in 13th, and Ruud Hullet popping up in 14th. So pretty even so far, and ooh, Cristiano Ronaldo coming in big. He wins the golden ball with 17 assists for Liverpool. Yeah, Pele down in third place, and then you got a couple more. Paul Scholes coming in fourth, uh, Johan Cruyff coming in in fifth, Zlatan Ibrahimovic in seventh, Carlos Alberto in ninth, and oh no! <laughs> this one, okay, okay, okay. It's not as bad as I originally thought, but Peter Schmeichel coming out on top with the golden glove, 23 clean sheets 
and Timmy Howard in third place with only 11, which looks pretty bad, but then you go down the list in eighth place and you see that Brad Friedel actually picked up seven clean sheets, which brings their total to a respectable 18, but still, it looks like it, it looks like the English are, have won this one, haven't they? <laughs> Let's go in. Dortmund in third. Hold ah! on. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it! Ah, oh, even with me stealing some of the best icons from the Prem and putting them over on the American team, still the English have won 97 points to 92. Just the all-time English lead and ended up scoring more, you know, defending better. Five points separated them, but I, I will have to take a at least one spoonful of Marbite at the end of this video, I guess. We're gonna save that till later. I still have a chance of redemption. Come on, America! We stole all their, we stole some of their best talent. We gotta make this up in the live action portion. Go time with it! All right, boys, here we go. The live action portion. We got all time America versus all time England at a neutral ground. To be on legendary difficulty. I'm not gonna be touching anything. It's just gonna be CPU on CPU. And as you can see, EA have added a whole bunch of South American cities. This one looks really cool. I've never, I don't know where this is. Probably Argentina. But as you see, these two historically great teams straight out onto the pitch. You guys can go ahead. Vote for the I think is right now on which league you think is gonna come out supreme in the live action portion. And I've pretty much taken away all of the high-end Prem players out of the starting lineup, save for Ashley Cole. So it is gonna be a, a true representation of the two league greats taking on each other. And as for me, you know what it is. I gotta go with America and you know the forfeit already. So without further ado, ladies and gentlemen, let us begin. The Revolutionary War number two is underway. Ronaldo, beautiful ball over the top to Salah. No one is marking him. He could send in a ball right here. What is he gonna do? Slots across, puts it in the middle, more. Honestly, absolutely nothing has happened so far. <laughs> All right, Ashley Cole's got a step. Put the fork. Oh! <laughs> Out of nothing. Literally nothing has occurred in this game. And then Ashley Cole sends on the cross. Kaka gets ahead of his man. And then, like, Ninja kicks it into the back of the net. Look at this. That's he caught sleeping. And wow. Out of midair. Look at this acrobatic volley from the Brazilian wizard. And Schmeichel. Caught sleeping at the near post. Fantastic individual effort there. Early days, Kaka coming through in the 38th minute. There was an update to the game before uh, I loaded up this experiment, so maybe crossing is, is back in. And that should be it for the first half, ladies and gentlemen. I think it's just one shot, one shot on target, and one goal. Yep. <laughs> I mean, dominating performance from the US side, 63% uh, of the possession, but. I mean, it is, it's one shot, one shot on target and one goal. <laughs> but still, anyone's game in the second half, boys. Pull it over to Vieira. Okay. Just a cross in. Oh, no. Oh, my God. <laughs> no. <gasps> what a calamitous mistake. The new boy, Paul Skulls, nicks it off of the foot of the defender and then just slots it home. This is just a complete kerfuffle at the back. Who is that? I think Hierro or Nesta? Kaka! Marking Skulls brings it down and then Skullsy just takes it off of him and puts it near post. Oh my days. Instant response from the UK boys. And from who else but the old curmudgeon himself, Paul Skulls. Yeah, yeah, it's very disturbing seeing him in a Liverpool kit. Honestly, the crap can't come fast enough. Okay. Roy? Ooh, beautiful ball over the top. Over to Johan. Long time. Coming in. What's going to do with Cork? To the back post. He's free. He's going to lot in. Oh! <laughs> beautiful football from the American boys. Look at that. Another fantastic volley. I think it was headed down at the back post by Stoikov. And Zlatan Ibrahimovic is not going to miss from that distance. Let's see it right here. Beautiful ball. Hollywood ball. No one catches Cork. Sends to the back post. Intelligent little knockdown there. And ferocious close range volley from the big Zlatan. Look at that once oh, no. again. Oh my God. He hit it directly into the shoulder of Peter Schmeichel and it ricochets off of him into the back of the net. He has not covered himself in glory in this match, Schmeichel. And there we go. The devastating man bun himself puts it 2-1. We still got a lot of game to play. It's gonna find its way to Ashley Cole. What are gonna do here? Slots it back to Pirlo. Uh, good move, but oh! Georgie Best has sent another one in. Gerard is in for Kaka. That is going to find its way to Bobby Moore. Oh! Desai 
had to get away from Cruyff. He was lurking. Puts it over the top to Carlos Alberto. And that is going to be it, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to split the difference. It's going to be one for the UK boys. And it's going to be one for the Americans. But in the live action portion, America is victorious. But yeah, I did get one of the predictions wrong. <laughs> I did get the Simpsons wrong. So I'll have to go ahead and eat a whole spoonful of Marmite. If you want to see that forfeit, I'm going to be posting it. And it doesn't matter when you're watching this because I'm going to post it as a highlight. I'm going to have a compilation of all my forfeits highlighted on my Instagram. As well as my UK journey. So go ahead and check all that out. Also, now that I'm back from the UK, I think I'm going to get back into it. I'm going to start streaming over on the Twitch every Saturday and Sunday. So go ahead, check me out over there. If you want to check out more content from me, go ahead and click over here. Ding Or to check out the latest experiment, go ahead and click over here. But that's going to be it for me. Be Hopefully, you guys have a wonderful day. Remember to yourself. Stay humble. Until next time, boys. Stay Stay